So on Easter Sunday, 2022, there was a chorus of Alleluia, Christ is risen, across the web, Twitter and Facebook. Rosie, from her hospital bed, saw her mum for the first time. She was still on life support, still fighting. And as I begin to meditate and write this on Wednesday night, Rosie is still fighting. And actually, as I record this on Saturday night, Rosie is still fighting, still hooked up to machines that help her breathe and monitor just about everything. Hallelujah, Christ is risen indeed. But do you want... Do you know what? Please don't give me a Christ that is suddenly glorified, angelic and perfect. Let me explain. I hate the epilogue to Job in the prose where Job suddenly has returned to him everything that he had lost. As if life is, if you say the right words in the right order, it gets you what you want. Life isn't like that. When we suffer, we are changed. The scars of an accident, an operation, are there with us forevermore. They change us and remind us of the fragility of life. What if Jesus had not been resurrected? What then? What would our faith be? What is the faith of Cristiano Ronaldo who lost one of his twins exactly the same time as one of our twins had a machine to help her breathe and more drugs in her than Nuki on a Friday night? And what does Jesus refer to? To Thomas. Does he refer to the resurrected life and demand to be acknowledged, to be worshipped? Does he show his perfect body and demonstrate the immense healing power of God? Is this a power struggle between evil, the damaged, and good, the perfect? Because if we go down those lines, we are closely aligning ourselves to fascism. So what did Jesus show Thomas? Thomas's doubt is the same doubt 2,000 years later. And Jesus gave his answer. Jesus' answer was not in the healing, but in his wounds. Jesus' answer was that God was suffering and he showed the wounds to give understanding. It is in the wounds that we see God, not in the healing. The broken, not the repaired. So God is to be seen and damaged and broken and we pray continuously for many things. But rather we need to search, search for the single prayer that grows stronger and stronger. To see God, to see Christ in the moment. And this moment does not reflect on the future or lament the past. But the here and now, the one thing that is life. Where we see the life that is, not lamenting the lack of achievement, the lack of what can be done. Rather, we treasure the what is. If we truly live in the moment, then we don't worry about what we cannot do or what cannot be done in the future. But rather, the blessing of this moment is enough. For Thomas doubted the existence of God in the world, and yet God was there in the very places that could be described as God-forsaken. Jesus showed the wounds of life, not a healing miracle that seems unreal. That is why I like the story of Thomas. It is rooted in my reality. A God that, that says, I will show you where I am. And where I am is where you least expect it. Here, see the wounds. This is where I am.